Are you looking for the best Memory Palace books so you can become a master of your memory? Are you looking for some memory hacks to help memorize books or textbooks easily? Or maybe you just want to improve your memory to make your life easier. But where on earth do you start? In today's video, I'm going to help you separate the wheat from the chaff with five Memory Palace book recommendations to help give some context to your search. And to get you started on your memory quest today, I'll show you how most successful learners treat that quest for best results. Now, before we start with my first recommendation, I want to address an issue that came up recently. I received a question from Bylan on a previous video I've done about Memory Palace books. He asks, is there any book that is a step-by-step -step guide to the Memory Palace and of course the optimal way to do it? I'm having a hard time finding a book that gets right to the point. I'm afraid that books are not things that get to the point, certainly not at the demand of the reader. I get a mercifully small amount of questions and comments about when this or that book or video I put out is going to get to the MEAT, which is why I use the acronym for what MEAT really means. Meaningless, edutainment, absurdly thriving. Listen, no writer or video creator knows exactly where you as the reader stand, which is why my first recommendation is Moonwalking with Einstein, The Art and Science of Remembering Everything by Joshua Four. If you're willing to read widely, patiently, and using the techniques we share in our How to Memorize a Textbook video, I think you'll love this book no matter where you stand. You just have to be willing to accept that although content might be king, context is God, and all successful learners render their allegiance to context to make sure they don't miss a thing. And if you want more recommendations and breakdowns like the one I'm about to give that include books that expand your competence without pandering to human impatience to get to the point, get started now by getting subscribed, enabling notifications, and for the love of memory, hit that thumbs up. Now, many people have loved Moonwalking with Einstein, which is Joshua Foer's incredible study of the memory competition world and how he rose through its ranks. Readers new to memory techniques, though, have complained that he doesn't do much teaching. That's understandable. It's hard to perceive the great wisdom he shares about memory techniques when you've never used them before. In other words, when you haven't paid your dues to context. Similar complaints have arisen regarding Lynn Kelly's The Memory Code, a book which doesn't even express the teaching of memory techniques as its purpose. Rather, it's a very good book focused on the role of memory strategies in the survival of cultures deep into history. If you already use memory techniques, you'll perceive many wonderful angles that supplement and improve your practice because previous experience allows you to see more. Linz recently followed it up with Memory Craft, which dives deeper into the techniques themselves and includes stories of her own. Highly recommended. Now then, how about some context instead of meaningless edutainment, absurdly thriving? First published in 2011, Joshua Four's incredible book debuted at number three on the New York Times bestseller list and stayed on the list for eight weeks. To this day, it still seems to be selling very well and helping inspire, encourage, and educate a lot of people about the memory world. In his engaging writing style, Four takes you on a fascinating journey through how the mind of a memory champion works. He goes in depth about the mnemonic techniques they use to store memories. A freelance science journalist, Fower learned the technique of memory training while researching the U.S. Memory Championship. At the contest, Fower observed how people would memorize an entire deck of cards in just a couple of minutes. This fascinated him and got him thinking whether the skill could be learned. Fower discovered that individuals who aced memory contests used special strategies handed down from the ancient world to visualize things. Most people use memory palaces by visualizing a structure, such as their home in their mind. These memory palaces usually have several different rooms and people inside who represent what they're trying to remember. Fower decided to test his own memory power. A year later, he won the US Memory Championships against champion mental athletes who could memorize the exact order of 10 shuffled decks of cards in less than an hour. The book draws on thorough research, the history of memory studies, and various tricks of mental champions. I have a bit of a personal connection to it too because it mentions this Warrior of the Mind pin in the opening pages something I'll say more about later in this video. My second recommendation is The Art of Memory by Francis Yates, a book I've been creating a study guide for in our playlist series, The New Art of Memory. Published in 1966, this book is still referenced in influential memorization guides and books today. 
The author, Francis A. Yates, traces the development of the mnemonic systems from the Simonides of Kos era through the Renaissance until the 17th century, when scientific methods were initiated. This is the oldest mnemonic strategy, and is also known as the method of loci. The book narrates the story of Simonides, who was hired by a nobleman to read poems during a banquet. After the reading, he was asked to go outside to meet someone. Before he could re-enter the banquet hall, it collapsed, killing everyone inside. All the bodies were mangled beyond recognition. The story goes that Simonides used his memory to recall the faces and names of every person that was killed. He realized the importance of recalling facts based on their locations, or the method of loci. These ideas hold good even now. For example, if a defense lawyer needs to recall evidence during a trial, he can first create mental images of a place familiar to him, maybe his home, and peg each piece of evidence to a room. During the trial, he can then recall those pieces of evidence by mentally walking through his house. But there's more to it than memory stunts for winning court cases. Enter Matteo Ricci. He's not the author of my third recommendation, but the subject. The book is The Memory Palace of Matteo Ricci by Jonathan Spence. In this book, the author explores the story of a Jesuit priest named Matteo Ricci who lived during the 16th century and how he used special mnemonic memory techniques to convert the Chinese to Christianity. The priest joined the New Catholic Order, the Society of Jesus, in 1571 and studied law in Rome. At that time, the order was quite young and needed to widen its influence. To ensure this, it would send young priests into the world to convert people to Catholicism. The story goes that Ritchie became a willing member of that mission and sailed to China as a missionary. For more than three decades, he used his vibrant personality to convert the Chinese to Catholicism. I imagine he knew a lot about how to memorize speeches. One of his key tasks was to convey basic Christian principles to the Chinese people in a manner they could appreciate and learn from, so he turned to memorization techniques for help. He taught the Chinese people the art of creating memory palaces through images in their heads, helping them store several pieces of information in their minds to be able to recall it later. The images acted as a narrative or a story, helping the Chinese understand the Bible and its teachings through their own cultural and spiritual norms. My fourth Memory Palace book recommendation is How to Remember Anything by Mark Channon. In this book, memory grandmaster and author Mark Channon focuses on how a radically improved memory can add more value to anyone's personal and professional life. It is filled with memorization techniques that teach you how to recall numbers, dates, and facts, as well as ideas on how to remember them by using different processing strategies. This makes the book one of the most practical ones on the art of memory improvement. It comes with innovative exercises that can build the confidence and vocabulary of readers. It also includes core strategies that can make memories and mental images more magnetic. Now, before I talk about recommendation number five, I have a bonus recommendation for you, so keep watching. The second to last book on the list is Unlock Your Amazing Memory, the fun guide that shows grades five to eight how to remember better and make school easier by Brad Zepp. If your children are struggling with learning in school, this book has plenty of ideas you could use. It outlines powerful strategies that can improve memorization skills while making it a fun activity. The techniques teach them to remember what they see, read, and hear. Three traits that can result in better grades and more confidence in classroom settings. Teachers who have used this book say that it has transformed the way their students process their lessons and made tremendous improvements. And one reason for these great results is that this guide dives into the main issues that affect our attention spans, our memory and focus. This feature makes the book especially useful for students in grades five to eight. Children in grades three and four can also benefit from it with some help from parents and teachers. And now for the bonus book. But first, take a moment to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for some wonderful memory expert content from learning languages to how memory palaces work. You'll know when my latest videos are released. And the bonus book on my list, let's just say I'm a little biased here, because I wrote it. It's The Victorious Mind, How to Master Memory, Meditation, and Mental Well-Being. But it brings us full circle because I end it almost the way Joshua Four begins Moonwalking with Einstein. It's part of a great call to adventure that leads to exactly the kind of stellar memory improvement results anyone can expect when they use memory techniques. I know this from personal experience. You see, Joshua Four notices the warrior of the mind pin at the beginning of his book, something that Tony Buzan gave to me. Now, I don't think Tony gave it to me to bolster my ego. I think he did it to bring me even closer to the memory tradition that saved my life. The Victorious Mind tells the story of how I overcame the mental distress that imprisoned me in a highly functioning, manic-depressive identity and almost took my life. I used just three practices to do so, 
self-inquiry meditation, memory training, and biohacking. But more than a story of self-transformation, it offers detailed guidance through the techniques I used to release myself from the haze of lithium along with the illusion of self. I did my best to make it the most detailed book I could possibly write, and it even comes with special video and audio elements you can download to make the lessons jump off the page as I take you into one of my biggest and most heavily populated memory palaces. This book is ideal not just for those struggling with mental illness, but for anyone suffering mental malaise, whether it's digital amnesia and scatterbrain depression or control freakism. But it's for anyone who likes a story that will help inspire you as it gives you more education about how the techniques work. And if you want to improve your memory magnetically, the six books recommended in this video will give you a good understanding of the history of memory improvement techniques and ideas on how to build memory palaces. Don't forget that this is always the beginning of the adventure, and there is always more to learn. In fact, the more you learn, the more you can learn. And if you'd like an extended sample from the audiobook of The Victorious Mind, check out this video next.